Hey everyone and welcome to Critique Quest, or should I say the disembodied voice of Critique Quest as my camera is broken. I know, what else could go wrong? Today I'm going to be talking about Upper One Games' atmospheric puzzle platformer Never Alone. The story of Never Alone is presented as the kind of tale an elder passes on to his or her grandchildren. Even a few of the cutscenes are in a kind of scrimshaw style and are rated wonderfully by one such elder. It's simple and follows a young girl, Nuna, on her journey to find the cause of an unnatural blizzard with the help of an arctic fox. It has heart, it moves along quickly, it also feels magical in an ancient sort of way, which is not surprising as it's based on old indigenous tales. And there's quite the little flurry of excitement towards the end, but the best word I can think to describe the story of Never Alone is pleasant. I mean, that's what Never Alone is, a pleasant little tale. I think the best thing about the narrative is that it offers some insight into a culture with which you may not be all that familiar. With each plot point and setting, you unlock a cultural insight. Videos that play like clips from a documentary on the relevant scenario, character or set piece. I wouldn't recommend watching them as you go, even though you can, as it tends to throw you out of the moment. But you would be missing a lot if you skipped them entirely, as these videos add a real sense of being and truth. Ultimately, there's a story within a story in Never Alone, so I suppose the narrative is really a vehicle to tell this larger story. One about the Inupiat people. This is really unique, I think. Never Alone is clearly one of those games that tests the traditional boundaries of what video games should be, what kind of experience they should offer, and how they should go about it. I will always encourage these kinds of projects, because whether or not they're completely successful in their vision, they're the ones who are truly exploring, and there's still a lot of uncharted terrain ahead. You can actually play Never Alone with a friend. I didn't, as I only have one controller, so I'm reviewing this game as a single player experience. However, based on my experiences, I would say that the game would better fit the two player format. The game really offers four or five central ideas and mechanics. Enemies, the wind, which can both get in the way or be utilised to your benefit. Spirits, bad and good, they can help or whisk you away. The bowler, a ranged hunting weapon used for retrieval and the clearing of obstacles in your path. And of course, everything in between, largely the to me to you element concerning Fox and Nuna, such as dropping ropes and moving boxes. The mechanics are solid. Where this game trips somewhat is the slow integration of all these mechanics and the fact that gameplay doesn't always feel intuitive. Also, controls on occasion are sluggish and occasionally unresponsive, like the bowler, for example, which took forever and a day to aim properly. But it all improves dramatically in later levels, where your control over the fox is extended and play evolves into a much more complex and challenging experience. These new elements of play are woven into simpler scenarios seen before, such as the chase sequences. And a perfect example would be that in one area, you must use the fox to call a moving spirit tree, which Nuna will ride atop. You must jump Nuna from platform to platform, whilst also commanding the platforms to move as the fox. You have to time it just right, and be careful to move closely, as the spirits will disappear should the fox stray too far. The latter levels really require impeccable hand-eye coordination and thought on your part, which I thoroughly enjoyed. However, it takes the game far too long to build up to this perfect balance of play, so the game ends up feeling like it's three quarters tutorial and one quarter gameplay. A few things struck me as a little odd. For instance, Nuna or the Fox will easily drown in some levels, whereas in others they can swim underwater for prolonged periods without a breath meter or timer. Never Alone is a fable story though, so I suppose it doesn't matter all that much. The backgrounds and visuals are beautifully hazy behind a constant veil of snow. They're a watercolour wash of steel and charcoal greys, murky blues and whites. Against this backdrop is a warm, earthy child clad in heavy brown caribou clothing, and an arctic fox that stands both separate and a part of the environment. Spirits appear to be drawn with the smooth swish of a paintbrush, and the ghoulish spirits swooping about a derelict village are like physical manifestations of the northern lights in the sky. The art director has succeeded in lovingly creating this barren, icy tundra that can exist in reality, but also within this fable world. 
I also want to mention the character animation. I love the simplicity. The wind, as an example, pushes you around quite a bit in this game, and you can feel the weight of it visually through Nuna's movement and tread. Also, the way little Nuna blows warm air onto her hands, or the way the fox pours into the snow against the blizzard, really adds life to these characters. I mean, it doesn't always get it right. The polar bear, for instance, moves a little strangely on occasion, but it works on the whole. None of these things are particularly dramatic, but I think it's worth mentioning, as it subtly brings this little story to life. The music really reflects the grace of the imagery. It's applied with a soft hand, and largely focuses on creating a sparse auditory landscape. Central pieces of music have a touch of warmth to the melodies, largely because of the use of the piano, but a kind of chilliness surrounds it. Tracks like Hilltop, Reborn, and the Chapter 3 introduction are like literal translations of what it feels like to be bundled up warm against the freezing ice and snow. And when the music needs to be exciting or evoke dread, it does so wonderfully, combining howling instruments with tribal drum beats and sharp, jagged tones. Throughout, it manages to maintain this otherworldly kind of quality, which can be both beautiful and dangerous. The visuals and sounds are another of the game's strengths. Now, I would call Never Alone a gamella or a gamelet, similar to a novella or novelette in literary terms. It aims to be a memorable, stylish experience with all the narrative juices of a big title, only it's condensed into a few hours worth of play. It's an interesting mix of documentary and fable presented to us, the gamers, in an elegant and thoughtful way. Perhaps the biggest issue with this game is the gameplay. As I said before, it doesn't always feel particularly smooth, and it really shines in the final levels but takes too long to get there. If you're looking for something unique to try, as I was when I bought it, I would recommend giving Never Alone a go. For those of you who actively seek out new gaming experiences, bad, good or indifferent, this title would be a worthy venture. And if you are thinking of downloading this game, the Never Alone team have recently announced a patch for the PC and one is currently in development for the PS4 and Xbox One. It aims to fix a lot of the problems I mentioned previously, so I would recommend waiting for that if you're thinking about downloading the game on consoles. I will end this review by saying that Never Alone is certainly one of a kind. A docu-fable come Atmos Plat. Atmospheric platformer. I realise now I said that, uh, it sounds like something that would wind up in the toilet bowl. Props to Upper One Games, though, for creating something I haven't really seen before. So that was the review. Thank you for watching, or listening, I guess I should say. I'll see you all in my next video, which will be a new series review. I'm really excited to share it with everyone. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you all soon. Please feel free to leave your comments and uh, thoughts on Never Alone in the comment section below. Bye!